Why does MSTR not perfectly track the price of Bitcoin? In fact, why does it sometimes underperform Bitcoin if it's supposed to be amplified Bitcoin? For example, Bitcoin just made a new all-time high, but MSTR has not made a new all-time high since November 2024. I think some people misunderstand what Michael Saylor and other Bitcoin treasury companies are building when it comes to creating an intelligently leveraged Bitcoin position. MSTR is not designed to track the price of Bitcoin on a daily basis. There are 2x Bitcoin ETFs, such as BITX, that aim to do this by amplifying Bitcoin's price every day. These products offer a very tight, short-term correlation, but tend to be poor long-term investments due to short-term volatility decaying long-term returns. Strategy is an intelligently leveraged long-duration Bitcoin position. The company takes on long-duration, low-interest rate credit and uses it to buy more Bitcoin, pairing long-duration credit instruments with a long-duration asset. This approach is not designed to track Bitcoin on a daily, monthly, or even quarterly basis. It is designed to amplify Bitcoin's returns over multiple years or decades. When people complain that MSTR has not tracked Bitcoin perfectly or is down over a nine-month period, they are missing the nature of what strategy actually is. With long-duration credit, Bitcoin treasury companies often trade at a premium or even a discount to their underlying Bitcoin net asset value, or MNAV. This may be from the market's expectation for future BTC yield, an underlying valuable business, or general market sentiment towards leveraged Bitcoin. If someone bought MSTR nine months ago at an MNAV of over 3x and that premium contracted to 1.6x, they could easily underperform Bitcoin simply because the premium compressed. However, the underlying capital structure may remain roughly the same, an intelligently leveraged long-duration Bitcoin position. Over the long run, if Bitcoin outperforms the company's fixed income liabilities and the MNAV premium remains stable, MSTR could outperform Bitcoin, and it likely would. However, buying these companies at a premium carries the risk that the premium can contract, which can hurt returns even when Bitcoin is performing well. It is important for investors to understand that if they want to own an intelligently leveraged Bitcoin position, they must be aware that they might be paying a premium for it. There are other Bitcoin treasury companies with similar underlying capital structures that may not be trading at much of a premium, but they still operate with a large balance sheet of Bitcoin paired with long duration debt at low interest rates. So as MNAV premiums can expand or contract, Bitcoin treasury companies are not designed as short-term, perfectly correlated leveraged Bitcoin positions. They are long-duration leveraged Bitcoin positions. A good way to think about them is to zoom out, look multiple years ahead, and operate from the thesis that Bitcoin may outperform fixed income. If that thesis is correct, Bitcoin treasury companies using long-duration credit can be extremely compelling opportunities. However, expecting their short-term performance to perfectly match Bitcoin's daily price movements is a fundamental misunderstanding of what they are and how they work. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time.